Hello, welcome back to Math Time with Professor Prime. I'm your host as always, Professor Prime. And today we're going to talk about math and Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. We are going to get into it. For the record, there will be no spoilers in this video. For the comment section, <laughs> that depends. Use your best judgment on both sides of that. Try your best. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, we're going to talk about its history a little bit. We're going to talk about the gameplay. We're going to talk about uh, the community. We're going to talk about my experience with it and just how math is involved in all of it and how it's not a bad thing and how it may not be what you think. You know? So with that in mind, we're going to get into it. Shall we? All right, so with Final Fantasy like 14, it came out back in 2010, and it did not go well. It lasted for a few years, but it was not uh, received well commercially or critically. And so then things changed. Everything was revamped. Uh, you had a new game engine. You had new gameplay elements. You had a whole new atmosphere going on. And since 2013, it's been pretty nonstop with this game. And I, I feel like it's come to like just this crazy point in the year 2021 where we're at now. Because it blew up even more than it already had. And it's been received very positively since it's come out. Both uh, critically and commercially. Like very much <laughs> commercially. To the point where it has become the number one uh, selling Final Fantasy game. And that's saying something, because there's been some heavy hitters in that series, right? And just like talking about it and describing how well it's doing, it already requires some math to do it. And even with its title, which I know may not seem like something to some, but Final Fantasy XIV, like that lets you know at least there were 13 other entries. And that says something, and by this point, Final Fantasy, uh, regardless of the game, has become a well-oiled machine. There are certain things you expect with a Final Fantasy game, but this one is another level because, yes, you expect all those other things, like certain tropes that show up, certain mechanics that show up, but you're also adding in this idea that it's not only a Final Fantasy game, but it's an MMO, a massively multiplayer online game. And there are so many things that come with that, and we'll get into just oh, all the things, or I'm gonna try. And as we do push forward, like I'd be curious to like um, hear your opinions about Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, how have you experienced it, and how do you see math playing a role in it? Yes, please feel free to add to the conversation. You know, after you watch this or during, if you you know it strikes you. Okay, so again, it, it's doing very very well, and to this point, Final Fantasy XIV at this point has uh, over 25 million users, right? Eight different races that you can choose from when you're creating your character, uh, 20 classes. And once you get good enough at those classes, 20 jobs. And it's just like such an intricate game. It's a living thing. And there's a lot of math and how that functions and how it flows. And when you're talking about the gameplay, whew, there's a lot to do, right? So with this particular game, right, it is subscription based, right? Like, um, so they do have a free trial. And if you haven't uh, tried that trial, I, I highly recommend it. Like, um, so with that in mind, uh, past that trial, there's a $15 a month, um, you know, fee attached to that, right? Like a 15 <laughs> dollar a month subscription fee and you got to decide if that's worth it for you like uh, can you afford it if you can't afford it uh, what are you getting out of it and I would argue if you can afford it and you like playing a game that alone justifies that to me but like I'm um, getting into what is entailed with all that whew, it is a lot so so like I said like uh, 20 classes to choose from or you know discover along the way and some of these are important to combat. Some of these are like um, more magic based. Some of these are more melee ba based. And no matter what the case is, numbers are involved because right. If you're looking at the melee weapons, you know 
you, you can dish out some serious damage. You can get different buffs along the way. And with magic, the same deal. And you're just dealing with like um, your preferences and the different benefits and trade-offs that come with choosing something that is more magic-based versus melee-based. Um, and to me, that also amounts to like short range versus long range and having to like adjust as you play with that idea. And I think there's a lot to be said about that. But with some of the classes, there's also the idea that you know crafting is a big thing, um, right? As you can craft different items. You can also fish. You can also search and like um, mine different things, right? Like, um, and math is involved with all these sort of things. Cause like, let's say like, um, you are playing the gladiator class. That's what I started out with, right? Like I started out going to uh, discipline of war route and starting with the gladiator class and then unlocking a lot of other classes along the way. And the cool part is like, um, you know, you can change different classes uh, by switching off the weapons. I thought that was interesting. And so as you press forward, like like I said, like I started off with the gladiator class, right? There's so much to consider just going into that, right? So it's like, hey, I can dish out some serious damage and, you know, maybe I can take a hit or two, you know? So there's math and how that works. But then there's also the idea that, you know, I'm picking up different skills, right? I'm picking up different classes. I'm going on missions. I'm building up experience. And as I build up experience, um, I am building up experience in terms of the character as a whole. And I'm building up experience for whatever class I'm in. And, you know, experience you get experience points to build all of that up, right? And you get levels in numbers, math, they're all involved in that. And then when it comes to your character as a whole, right, you get different attributes, right? You get things like HP, like uh, MP, like dexterity, um, mind, intelligence, you know, all that good stuff, speed, um, you know, strength, all that good stuff, um, magic. <laughs> And so many other things in that game, right? And there's a lot of math and all, all that works and how all of that functions. Um, and I think that's pretty cool. And so you're going around, there's just so much experience to like um, gather, but there's also a lot of experience needed to go to the next level and more and more experience needed to level up your different classes. And you gotta decide what you wanna do with that and what makes sense on your mission and to get experience, right? There's so many different ways you could do that. You could do that through fighting, you could do that through crafting items, you can do that through, um, you know, going on raids, you could do that by like um, going on fates, like, um, and that's pretty cool too, and there's also like different dungeons you can explore, and there's a lot of experience that you can get, and um, while I, like for me, I, I'm so big on the single player experience, but like um, having played Final Fantasy 14 it's like there's a lot that you can do just like on a single player route just like uh, you know but there's a lot more you can do with the multiplayer side of things right because if you're playing it with kind of like a single player mindset um, you know you're exploring you're getting to see different people but you might not interact with them the same right but um, what you can do is you can work with people and you can do something like the limit break which in this game you have to be working with other people to use and you have to be like selling at whatever job you're doing in that, right? And um, jobs, I feel like it's a, it's not like a horribly complicated discussion, but like it, it comes out of the idea of class. Like you can get more special, like you could be like a tank or a healer or stuff like that. Um, and you know, math is involved in how all of that works. And I think that's really cool. Um, and oh, there's so much, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, you know, as you go forward though, like not only are you know you building up experience and leveling up your um, character as well as your classes, but you also have a lot of resource management involved. You get different items and you have a set amount of space in your inventory. And yes, that can grow over time, but you have to be mindful. You have to say like, okay, I have this in my inventory, I have that in my inventory, I have uh, weapons and armor that I can place in a chest, which gives me more options. Um, to place other items in that larger inventory, but I have to be careful of the chest too So it's like you have to be able to manage all that and for me I remember when I was playing like, you know, I would go and I would crew a lot just all the things <laughs> like so right, um, There's a lot of math um, And you know fighting your enemies, which is another way to gain experience, right? So you're gaining experience sure, but you're picking up different items and uh, Resources and those resources can be used to craft and other resources that could be used to craft you could also accrue from you know getting 
um, different minerals by mining and also like fishing. And you could also get, uh, you know, different plants uh, by using like the uh, botanist class. Um, and so with all that, math is involved because you have like a limited number of space and like when you're talking about like crafting and things like that, you know, you need a certain number of items uh, to, you know, craft a specific item, right? Um, and so you have to be careful with that and uh, all the while you're accruing money. You need money to operate in this world, right? And there's a lot of math in that and the economy and the economy in Final Fantasy XIV you know, it's like, um, you know, it's very much like dependent on all of the players themselves. So that's interesting to me. And there's like things in place to help balance that out. So inflation isn't, you know, as much of an issue as it could be. Um, and there's a lot of math in that, right? It's fundamentally insane. And then like, um, like I said, those, those spoilers on the story, but like the idea with the story is just that like, um, you know, it's very much calculated, right? Like, um, and how you experience that story depends on how you play the game, right? Because you can get real caught up in, you know, going like quest to quest, getting experience. And honestly, like if you're paying, um, you know, your monthly subscription, you want to get as much bang out of your buck as you can. And so while you do that, you could be getting like um, the studio, sorry, not studio. <laughs> you could be getting the story bit by bit, right? Or, you know, you could be jumping around trying to get that quicker. But no matter how you cut it, it's been calculated how much of that story exists. It's just like how you experience it time-wise, that's up to you. Um, but I think that's interesting. And then with Final Fantasy XIV, it's been going on for eight years. And currently, um, we're on Endwalker. And, you know, that, that's been coming out and people have gotten to start, sorry, people have started to play that. Um, and that's interesting. And honestly, in Walker coming out, um, reminded me that I wanted to do this video on Final Fantasy XIV. So thank you, In Walker. Um, I had been thinking about it for a while, but I figured it was going to be really hard to do in a sense because it's like I don't know how to narrow it down. But I feel like um, what I'm doing was a good way to balance it. Um, so with that in mind, right? Um, there's so much math in the gameplay itself and balancing things out, right? There's a lot of gameplay in the battle, like I mentioned. There's a lot of gameplay in the crafting, and when you're crafting the items, right, you could craft something that you could use in battle, right? Like, um, because you can, cr like, craft items that you'll use in a traditional sense, but you could also create, um, you know, weapons and armor, um, and all of it plays together in a beautiful way because, you know, you're always building, you're always getting more experience as you build, and if you get more items than you need, you could always sell them and buy more material. You can, like, make a loop for yourself, and that's interesting to me. You could decide how you want to play this, and it's like, it's this living, breathing thing in its own right, like this game, and there's a lot of math in keeping that up and running. One of the issues that has come up in this year several times is... Uh, you know, the issues with waiting queues, which I think that's fascinating to me because, right, like the idea is like, you know, you're playing on different servers and everything is live and everything is like um, functioning and there's so much math and how all of that works. And the idea is like, you know, you'll be on a queue, right? You might see like 31 people hitting you, for instance, and you know, you gotta wait until you can get in. And in some cases, could be literally thousands of people if it's a big event like Endwalker. Um, so you might have some pro troubles getting in and there's ways that they like, um, try to compensate people for that in ways that they try to like um, work with that. But you know, since this is a living, breathing thing, it can be really hard to issue updates. Um, you know, and there's a lot of math in like um, the logistics of all that, right? Um, and it's worth noting that there have been some issues this year um, in particular because the game has become so immensely popular. Like again, it was already doing really well before 2021 but it blew up in this like uh, last year or so. And I think that's interesting, I think that's fascinating and there's math and how all of that works, right? Because you have so many people playing, you know, it ends up being harder to like have people get in and you know, there's something to be said about that because then it's like, well, how does that affect user experience? Well, like, I, you know, you're gonna get some complaints, sure, but like what I've noticed in the Final Fantasy XIV community is that like they are so incredibly patient and understanding about that you know not every single person but overall like i've seen just some really cool stuff and if you like look into it like even if you don't play like the game i think you should like look into like like twitter for instance or um 
you know, Instagram, stuff like that for people in the Final Fantasy community or, you know, YouTube too. Um, because they are like, um, again, like a lot of people that I've seen have been like pretty positive. They encourage each other to play. They get the struggles of developing the game further. And it's just like, there's this really cool positive atmosphere about it um, in them. So I think that's cool and worth exploring. And you know, like, these are people who play regularly and they are supporting this franchise. They, um, you know, just like anyone who's playing, but um, the community as a whole, I think that's fascinating because there's math and how everyone connects. And these are people who are playing the game. So there's math in and out of the game and like a sense of community in and out of the game for a lot of people. I didn't get to play for a super long time, but at the same time, kind of like, um, I played earlier this year in 2021 and I didn't play for a long amount of time in terms of like, I didn't play like most of the year or anything like that. Um, I got to play for pretty much like a, a month, but like the way I game, if I'm playing a game for a month, yeah, that's like a hundred hours, if not more. So I played a lot <laughs> and I gotta say like, if I had like the money or the time, I play it longer and I definitely count my uh, count my account because I um you know want to play again in the future it'd be really cool and that's the thing too like uh you know as a player you got to decide what you want to do and when so for me I um I got Final Fantasy 14 I think I got it for like $20 like on PS4 um and for me I'm like given everything I heard, I'm like, I'm willing to take this risk, I'm willing to take this gamble. And I spent, um, you know, a month on a free trial because I wanted to see just how it worked. And um, in that time, I spent a lot of time, like I'm pretty sure it was over a hundred hours. Um, and gotta say, yeah, I, I played it later than I should have some nights, but I'm okay with that, I can live with that. Um, and how I spend my money and how I spend my time, right? There's a lot of math in that. And so when it came time to do the subscription, I'm like, well, I couldn't really afford it time-wise or money-wise, but I kept my account. And I think that was important. So I can just jump right back in and I don't have to spend time creating my character because that character already will exist, right? I don't have to restart things. And, you know, so that's part of that decision too. And I think it was, um, it was a really fun experience. Uh, I got to put in a lot of time. <laughs> Um, and there's still people who are, of course, playing regularly. They're doing so well that, again, it's an issue. But, like, I think it's worth noting that, you know, there's math and how all that functions and flows. And then in addition to, you know, some of the things I mentioned, right, there's math in the music, how it is composed, how it's used in the game, um, how you adjust your settings. Um, there's math in the user interface, right? There's a lot of items going on, right? There's, like, um, you know, your actions, and like um, different ways that you can set up those actions, different cues that you could build, um, you know, um, then there's I like, you know, options to get to your um, item list and your journal entries and stuff like that. Um, there's chat windows, there's so many different options. And so there's so much map and how all of that comes to you on the screen. Like how is it positioned? How big is everything? Uh, well, how was it designed? How is it programmed? How will, do you use it? And are you playing on a PC? or a Mac, in, like in this case these days, because it is out on Mac too, or are you playing um, on PS4 or PS5? Like, um, what are you doing with it, right? Um, and then it's just like, uh, are you playing with a keyboard and a mouse or a game controller? Whether you're playing it on a PlayStation system or like um, a computer, you have options for both. And how you interact with those input devices you know, that affects how you like act with the game and there's map and all that too. And um, I think that's fascinating to me. Um, and um, I guess like, yeah, so there's map in like uh, the user interface and like the HUD that like comes up on your screen. There's a lot of math in the menu options and how they're situated, how they can flow into one another. There's map in the stats or attributes if you prefer. There's math in the gameplay all over the creatives, from like the different classes and later jobs, to the limit breaks, to the working with other people, to the crafting, um, the battling, there's math in all of that. Um, and I think that's worth noting. And I feel like if you notice more of that, it can actually enhance the game for you. 
right? Because like I, when I played it, right, I was already in this mindset about math and gaming and how they link up. So I felt like that enhanced my experience. Like I think when I started these videos, I wondered if it was going to help or hurt my experience with gaming because like I didn't want to get into this mode where it's just like, oh, I'm noticing this connection all the time. Am I noticing the game? And the truth is like, I could notice the game and notice those connections and they actually work beautifully together. So I'm glad that I started doing videos like this and I'm glad with how they turned out um, and they enhanced my experience. So um, I wanted to see if there was anything else major. Uh, well, I'll just mention a few more brief things, like, right? Because uh, there's math in everything that I mentioned, but there's also math in like how things are animated, how they're like uh, kept up in a living game. Um, you know, there's mapping all those assets, and there was math in getting to this point in Final Fantasy uh, 14 because, again, like, um, A Realm Reborn is the second version of the game, and they pretty much had to start from the ground up because there were so many bugs and issues with the original Final Fantasy 10, uh, sorry, Final Fantasy 14. Um, so they had to, like, re like, you know, pretty much design everything from start, revamp everything, and there's a lot of math in how all of that goes. And to this day, they're pretty communicative about like um, Final Fantasy 14 and it's just like, it's a beautiful thing. So, you know, it shows no signs of slowing and I feel like, you know, that's interesting. Like um, when it comes to math, right, it's in gaming all over the place. I feel like you can especially see that in RPGs, especially JRPGs and whether you're doing a single player experience or a massively multiplayer online game, like you're gonna see some math, right? RPGs, MMOs specifically, Either way, there's some math in it. Uh, with that in mind, like I said earlier in the video, um, if you like watched it, uh, please let me know how you've seen math used in the game. Like, feel free to add to the conversation and let me know about your experience. Like, ooh, like what do you play as? Like, what class did you choose? What race did you choose? Like, um, what were some of your adventures? And did you interact with the uh, Final Fantasy community? Is a, a 14 community as a whole? Um, because like I interact with people here and there, um, but for me it's just like it's you know it's more fun to see like uh, everyone have fun and chime in periodically, and I'm getting better with interacting with people about that because um, it's like sometimes you know I just gotta call it out and be like, hey, this is awesome. And a lot of the people, of course, that play Final Fantasy XIV, it will come as no shock to you that they're big Final Fantasy fan, like fans, like in general. And Final Fantasy XIV has so many callbacks to so many Final Fantasy games, and I, like it is an amazing thing to see people talk about that and see them feel like nostalgic and just all this amazing stuff that they're feeling about this game. Um, so with that in mind, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And again, please feel free to add to the conversation. I'll see you in the next one, Professor Ryan Mount.